Cappadocia is a region that frequently appears on lists of most beautiful places on Earth. Is it worth to visit? I can absolutely say with a resounding yes. Come here for its unique landscapes, rich history, underground cities and amazing food. I hope you will enjoy the videos of my 6 days journey in Cappadocia and Istanbul and inspire you to plan your own trip to these destinations. I have also included the travel costs converted to USD at the end of the video for reference. Prices in Lira changes rapidly due to inflation. On the top of any activities list in Cappadocia has to be the magical balloon ride over the area surrounding Gorimi town, which is also where I am staying at. You will be picked up before 5am and gathered at the company headquarters for a light breakfast. After that, you get to watch the crew assemble and inflate the balloon. The ascent happens before 6am just as the sun begins to rise. The flight only lasts about 1 hour and costs around $170 during low season and around $280 during peak season. For my trip, the low and peak season cutoff was on end March. The price is painful, but it is really once in a lifetime experience and absolutely worth it. It is advisable to book 2 months in advance to get your guide via tour or club website for the most popular balloon companies as they can sell out. And it should be scheduled for the first morning you have in Cappadocia as there is only 70% chance of flight proceeding even during the optimal summer season. It is dependent on the weather conditions and the odds get slower during winter. This is the reason I would recommend staying 3 nights in Cappadocia to maximize your odds of doing this activity. In the case of cancellation, you will either get a full refund or be scheduled for the next day. The balloon ride itself is very smooth though it may be unnerving for those with fear of heights. The balloon rises to around 300 meters but the pilot will try to get close to the unique rock formations whenever possible. The ride ends with a champagne toast on the ground and you will be back to your hotel before 9am where you can have your hotel breakfast. After taking some rest, I would recommend a hike through Love and White Valley around the northwest to southwest side of Goreme Town. By hiking, you can get close to Love Valley mushroom shaped formations. The area is off limits for ATV or cars, which will only bring you to the panoramic viewpoints above the valley. If your balloon ride did not proceed for the day, this can be the replacement activity. For those not keen on hiking, I will recommend an alternative later in this video. This is a moderate hike suitable for people with basic fitness and some hiking experience. You will need to install the All Trails Hiking app and a subscription of $11 a year so that you can download the offline map. The mobile signal on the trail are not consistent so having the offline map will show your real-time location based on GPS. The trails are not signposted so it is necessary to check on your location based on the app time to time. The map you should download is Goreme Love White Uchisa Pigeon Loop. I would suggest starting at Goreme and end at Uchisa. Then take a taxi or bus back to Goreme after visiting Uchisa Castle. This will cut down the hike from 12km to 7km with an elevation gain of only 380m. This modified route should take less than 3 hours at moderate pace but do add time for photos or videos. It is essential to wear hiking shoes as certain areas of the trail are sandy slopes. Bring more water than you think is needed and a sun hat as there are almost no shaded areas. Other essentials are raincoats, snacks, sunscreen and power bank. If you decide to hike through Pigeon Valley back to Goreme, this adds another hour. Depending on what time you start, either have an early lunch in Goreme or late lunch in Uchisa, or have a heavy breakfast and skip lunch altogether. Well before you reach Uchisa town, you would have noticed the prominent Uchisa castle. It is the highest point in Cappadocia and is a natural formation made into defensive point used by various empires throughout history. 
You can explore the honeycomb-like structure and get a 360-degree panoramic view of the surrounding area. Entrance fee is around $8. If you are staying in Uchisa, this is the best place to watch sunset. As I'm staying in Goreme, I left early to catch the last bus at 6 p.m. This is the bus stop named Autobus Turagi on Google Map, about 15 minutes walk from Uchisa Castle where you can get a bus back to Koremi. The cost should be minimal. I was given a free taxi ride by a kind driver, so I have to guess the taxi ride would be around $4. Once back in Goreme, you can catch the sunset at the highest point called Lagos Hill located at the southeast of Goreme town. Since the town is not big, it will take 15 minutes to walk there. This is also the spot to wash balloons during sunrise, which I will show on the second day. There is a small entrance fee of around $1 and there are some stalls selling drinks and snacks. Most certainly, there will be quite a number of people at this area for both sunrise and sunset. But it never feels overly crowded, there are plenty of space to pick a spot. A quick reminder to help like and subscribe to my channel for videos on Istanbul and Switzerland. For meals, I will show the restaurants I ate at, the food you can try and the price. First dinner is at a homely restaurant at the northern edge of the town called Kan Kan Restaurant. I had chicken kebab and a coke for $14. The side dishes and bread are complimentary. In Cappadocia, you really wouldn't want to waste a single sunrise. For the second day, start early by going to the same Lovers Hill spot as the previous evening for sunrise at 6am. Timing might vary depending on season. This is the best place to wash the skies filled with balloons and it is close to where they take off. A lot of the hotels do promote balloon viewing from their hotel balconies or rooftop. But in my experience, most of the balloons do not fly that close to Goreme town. So they will look to be quite far away. Once done, it is time for hotel breakfast before going to the next location. The UNESCO Heritage Site of Goreme Open Air Museum is located about 1.5 km away from town centre. This is a Byzantine monastery complex dating back 1000 AD with several churches containing Christianity fresco. You can ask your hotel to arrange a taxi to get here for about $2. The entrance fee is around $22. A big turnoff is the additional $10 entrance fee required for the most well-preserved church within the complex, named the Dark Church. Most of the church areas do not allow photography or videos. As this is the most popular attraction in Goreme, do come here early to beat the crowds. You will likely be approached by guides offering paid guided tour of the site. It costs $22 for roughly 45 minutes of tour and may be affordable if you are here as a group though not truly necessary. Afterwards, you can have an early lunch back in Goreme or skip it altogether if you have a heavy breakfast as I did. I took a taxi from the open air museum to the start of Rose and Great Valley hiking trail for $4. Again, do use the All Trails hiking app to guide you on the right path. The map you should Download is Rose and Red Valleys. This is a moderate high difficulty trail around 7.5 km long with elevation gain of 260 m. It would take about 3 hours at moderate pace but do add time for photos or videos. 
Same advice as the love and white value hike in terms of what to bring. The trail will bring you to the rose valley where the rock formations appear rose colored. Just a bit past the cave house is a good photo spot. Do look up for it. There are also two 1000 year old abandoned churches along the route. The first is the Crusader or Cross Church, shown as Huckley Church on Altria's map, named as such due to the cross on the ceiling. There is a small stall selling orange and pomegranate juice beside it where you can take a break. Further along the trail is the Colum Church, shown as Colum Church on all trails map, named as such for the tall columns in the main room. Do take note the steps to get into the main room is dark, so turn on your phone torch. The only portion of the trail that might seem challenging in this section where you need to use a rope to hike up a 60 degree slope. Make sure both your hands are firmly gripping the rope and slowly hike up. It is easier than it looks. A bit past the midpoint of the hike is Red Valley Sunset Point. This is the most popular spot to view sunset as the rock formations appear red in colour during sunset. This area has a few food and drink stalls and can be reached by taxi for those that do not want to hike at all. I reach here around 1pm and continue on to finish the hike back to Gorime. Instead of doing a complete 7.5 km hike, you can also take a taxi to the Red Valley Sunset Point and hike the upper trail past Rose Valley and returning to Gorime. Shown as option 2, this will take about 4 km and less than 2 hours. Additionally, it is a downhill path so it is easier and all the best views are on this section of the hike. For those that wish to skip all the hiking, I would recommend joining the Red Tour, which will bring you to Uchisa Castle, Hatsabagi Fairy Chimneys, Zelvi Open Air Museum, Defren Valley, and Love Valley Viewpoint. To end the day, I arranged a taxi through my hotel to bring me to Red Valley Sunset Point at 6pm. Sunset timing might vary depending on season. The driver waited for me until 7.15pm and it cost about $24. The rock formation looks amazingly beautiful during this time. A quick reminder to help, like and subscribe to my channel for future videos on Istanbul and Switzerland. For dinner, I went to Tuma restaurant which is a rooftop restaurant at the centre of town. This time, I ordered kofte or Turkish meatballs. Together with sparkling water, it costs $15. The bread is complimentary. For the third day, I would recommend joining the Green Tour as the locations visited are as far as 80km from Goreme town. The tour operator will pick you up around 9.30am and the tour ends around 6pm. The one I chose costs around $70 and it covers all entrance fees plus lunch. I was lucky that there are only a family of 4 besides myself as normally a group could be closer to 10 person. The first stop is Goreme Panoramic Viewpoint. You get a view of Goreme, the portion of the Pigeon Valley closest to Goreme and Uchisa Castle in the distance. The guide will provide explanation at each of the locations visited and then you are given 15 to 30 minutes of free time. The next stop is during Kuyu Underground City which is around 40 km outside of Goreme. This is the highlight of the tour for me. There are around 200 underground cities and during Kuyu is the largest. The underground city is such a unique way of living. Built more than 1200 years ago, it goes 8 floors deep into depths of 85 meter. Over the centuries, it is used as a refuge for up to 20,000 people together with their livestock. 
Most of the city are closed off to avoid tourists getting lost, so you will find yourself walking through a tiny portion of the city. The large round stone seen here is a door and it is meant to stop attackers at every floor. The guide will explain how the population sustain themselves while living below underground that I won't cover here. Very fascinating and well worth the tour price for having someone to explain through everything. The tour will also make a quick stop at Na Crater Lake where the thermal springs are used by nearby hotels. This part is not particularly interesting. It is time for lunch at Riverside Restaurant in Ilara Valley. Due to the river currents are too strong during this time, the meals are taken inside the restaurant rather than sitting areas outside above the river. After lunch, we get to enter Ilara Valley for a hike. More like a stroll as it is just walking over flat terrain by the river. It is a stone canyon about 14 km long located 80 km from Koremi. To hike, the whole valley would have taken a full day. So the tour group will just cover a 4 km circle route. Along the sides of the canyon, there are churches and residential caves serving as refuge for Christian monks. The valley itself looked nicer from end April onwards once the trees regain their leaves. At one end of Ilara Valley is Selim Monastery, the largest in Cappadocia. It was built back in 8th century and later used as a caravan route stop along the Silk Road. The passageway even allows camels to go up all the way to the central part of the complex. The complex itself features churches, kitchen, living and storage areas. You can also get a good view from upper level of the monastery. The last stop is Pigeon Valley Viewpoint, this time closer to Uchisa town. Pigeons are a central part of agriculture in Cappadocia as it lacks fertile soil. These residents still use pigeon pool as fertilizers. This concludes the enlightening day tour and I would highly encourage to include this as part of your trip. I will show another two dinners I had in Goremi. The first is Sedef Steakhouse where I had tasty kebab with rice which is a lamb stew cooked inside a clay pot that the waiter will crack open in front of you. It is the signature dish in Cappadocia. However, this dish is relatively pricey compared to other food I had here. This meal costs $24. The next meal is at Bedili Kebab Restaurant where I had Adana Kebab which is lamb and cooked. This costs $13. Turkish food is some of the tastiest food I ever ate, so do try as much variety as you can. Lastly, I will go through the cost of the trip. This table covers both Cappadocia and Istanbul, but I will just elaborate for those related to Cappadocia shown in orange color. Return flights from Istanbul to Kayseri Airport cost $126 on Turkish Airlines with extra baggage and insurance. I would recommend booking airport transfers when between Kayseri Airport and Goreme Town for both ways. It costs $9 each way and you can send to your hotel doorsteps. Hotel cost depends on your budget. I splurge about $150 a night but you can find reasonable accommodations from $70 onwards with breakfast. Overall meals at Cappadocia can be pricey as it is a very popular tourist location. Expect to pay around $22 a meal. I skipped lunch as I took advantage of the fabulous hotel breakfast. It costs $1,290 in total excluding flight from my country to Turkey as a solo traveler. It can be reduced by around $300 if you choose a cheaper hotel for a 4 night stay and further in half if sharing with a traveling partner. In terms of attractions, I would skip Goreme Open Air Museum if you are on a budget and you could save $50 choosing a cheaper balloon company. That brings it down to $900. I will end with some footage of the hotel I stayed in and the breakfast meals. I hope this video can guide you for your trip to Cappadocia. 
Do help to like and subscribe to my channel for future videos on Istanbul and Switzerland. Thank you for watching.